guys, hi, it's Miss Holly, and I am joining you here from our front porch. And we are preparing to celebrate Pentecost Sunday as a church. Fun fact, why do we call it Pentecost? Well, built into the word Pentecost is the prefix penta, which refers to the number five, or in this case, 50, because Pentecost was a traditional Jewish holiday that happened 50 days after Passover. Why do we celebrate Pentecost today as a church? Well, it just so happens that on Pentecost, in this moment in history that we will discuss in our Bible story today, Jesus sent the promised Holy Spirit to be with his disciples and all of his future followers. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, descended to be with God's people after Jesus had ascended back into heaven. And that is something to celebrate because it meant that Jesus could be with his people everywhere and that his church could grow. Well, I hope you'll join me right back here in just a second as we get into more of why we celebrate Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. Bye. Hi friends. It's Miss Holly Hi. and Helene and Fiona, and we are joining you from our front porch. Sometimes we uh, sit out here to wait for something. Have you ever had to wait? What is it like to wait for something special to happen? It can be hard to wait. Maybe you've waited for your birthday to come so that you could celebrate or for Christmas Day so that you could be with special family and open a beautifully wrapped package under the tree. Maybe you've waited for a friend to come to play or a grandparent to come visit. I wanted to tell you a quick story from when I was a little girl. Well, there was a special family who used to come to visit us when I was a little girl. They were the Sawyers and they had a little girl named Katie and I loved it when Katie would come to visit because we had so much fun playing together. Do you have a special friend like that? Well, the Sawyers lived in another state and it would take them many hours to drive to our house. So they would only come to visit maybe one time a year. Well, there was one year when my parents told me that the Sawyers were coming, but they told me this a few weeks before they were going to come. I was excited. And every day I would ask them, are they coming today? I think maybe my parents started to wonder if they should have waited to tell me the news that the Sawyers were coming. Well, one special Saturday I woke up and at breakfast my mom said, the Sawyers are arriving today. Katie is coming today. Wow, I was excited. But they were still in their car driving and so I still had to wait but it was going to be a special day. Well, I waited by the front window for a while, and then I decided to do something while I waited. So I tidied the house to make it look nice. I cleaned my room. I got out a special toy and some games I wanted to play. Have you ever prepared for a friend to come? Well, it was late in the day towards dinner, and I asked my mom a few more times when Katie was going to arrive. And my mom had this idea. She said, maybe you could go outside on the front porch and sweep the porch while you wait. So I did. And the good news was that, oh thank you. That made the front porch look great. And while I was sweeping the front porch, Katie and her parents and brothers and sisters finally pulled up into the driveway in their car. Yay, hooray, Katie had arrived. Hi Katie. Now, it was so wonderful and special and we had a lovely visit together and lots of fun playing on that special time when her family came to visit. Well, sometimes when you wait, you might start to wonder if what you're waiting for is actually going to happen. Well, remember that we've been talking about the promise that Jesus made to his disciples. Remember, he had died on the cross, but he had been raised again to new life, and Jesus is alive today. 
And last week we talked about when Jesus ascended into heaven to be at the right hand of God the Father. But he promised that he would send his disciples a helper, the Holy Spirit. And he told them to wait. He said, wait for the Holy Spirit to come because through the Holy Spirit, I will be with you and I will give you the power to be my witnesses to Jerusalem, to neighboring cities and out into the world. And so today in our story, we learn that at Pentecost, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit that he had promised to his disciples. And we're going to hear about the amazing moment when the Holy Spirit arrived and all that happened. Join us for our Bible story today. Today, our story is from the book of Acts in the New Testament, chapter two. Pentecost was a special holiday and many people from other countries had come to Jerusalem to celebrate a special feast. So there were many people in Jerusalem that day. And that is probably why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit that day to begin growing his church. Well, what happened when the Holy Spirit came? His disciples obeyed Jesus. They were in that upper room waiting, just as Jesus had told them. They were waiting with Mary, Jesus' mother, and his brothers and other followers. But as they waited, they praised God in the temple. They prayed together that this promise that the Holy Spirit would arrive, that that promise would come true. Friends, when we wait, we can do those things too. We can praise God. We can pray for God's promises to come true. Even as we wait for Jesus to come back to make everything new, and even as we wait a little while to be back at church worshiping together, we can praise God and pray and help our neighbors. Well, when the Holy Spirit finally did come, I want to read to you from the Bible what that was like. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with this Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. What happened? Well, we talked about the wind before. You can't see the wind, but can you feel the wind? Yes. Recently, we had a windstorm and I felt it shake our house. They felt a violent rushing wind come through the room. In fact, it was so powerful and so loud that other people in the city heard it too and ran to see what was happening. We read about in the Bible about another sign. I have a tongue of fire here and um, you can make this craft yourself at home if you want to. But it said that the Holy Spirit looked like a tongue of fire that came to rest on top of each of their heads. Remember how we've talked about the Holy Spirit being like a flame living in us. This tongue of fire came to rest on their heads. But remember, the Holy Spirit is not the wind. The Holy Spirit is one of the persons of the Trinity, remember that when we learn about the Trinity, we believe in one God in three persons. And the Holy Spirit is one of the three persons of the Trinity. But you can't see the Holy Spirit. But he came that day to live inside the disciples. And something amazing happened. People came to see what was going on when they heard the wind. And they heard the disciples praising God. But it tells us that they were speaking and praising God in other tongues, other languages. And many of the people who came, it says, were confused and amazed because they knew these disciples, they spoke a language called Aramaic. That was the language they spoke with Jesus, Aramaic. And yet they were able to praise God and speak in other languages. And these people from other countries could hear and understand what they were saying. And they said, this is impossible. These men don't speak my language. What is happening? Some of them were just amazed. Others, they weren't sure what was going on. And they said, no, these disciples, they're just crazy. They've had too much wine to drink and they made fun of them. Peter, 
one of the disciples through the Holy Spirit began to preach. And he said, no, listen, we have not had too much wine. We are not crazy. The Holy Spirit has come and we want to tell you the good news about Jesus. And as he preached, he said, many of you have seen Jesus. You know this Jesus. You saw the amazing things he did when he was here on earth. But then he said something that was hard for them to hear. He said, but you and other wicked men handed Jesus over to be nailed to a cross and killed. That hurt many of their hearts. The Holy Spirit made their hearts sad. He said, but listen, this Jesus, God raised him from the dead. He said, death could not hold him and he is alive. Many people believed in Jesus as their savior that day through the Holy Spirit. This, friends, was the beginning of God's plan to reach all the nations around the world, starting in Jerusalem by sending the Holy Spirit. We too, friends, are part of that plan. When Jesus came into the world, you see, he fulfilled a promise made to Abraham long ago in the Old Testament. Do you remember Abraham? God made him a promise that through him, that through Abraham, all the nations of the world would be blessed, right? And the Holy Spirit was part of that plan too. So now the Holy Spirit has been sent to fulfill that promise that all of the peoples around the world could be part of God's kingdom. Even here in Santa Barbara, where we have heard the good news of Jesus and the Holy Spirit can come to live in us and we too can know Jesus as our savior and be part of his forever kingdom. I hope you'll think about this story with your families and ask questions. I wonder what it was like to be in Jerusalem that day, one of the people there, and to hear the arrival of the Holy Spirit and to see what happened. I wonder what it was like for the disciples when the Spirit arrived. I wonder how we can know that the Spirit is at work in our hearts as we trust in Jesus. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for sending Jesus to make it possible for all of us to be a part of your family and to live with you forever. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit so that people from all over the world can be a part of your church. Help us today and this week to worship with our families and to love our neighbors. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for our lesson today, friends. If you come to church today on Pentecost Sunday, there will be a special surprise as we continue to celebrate the good news that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be a helper for his people. Bye, everyone.